welcome back to the channel if you're new here my name is kate i like to make clothes here on youtube and talk about all things fiber arts and fashion i'm so excited for today's video because we're gonna be knitting shorts i actually love knitting shorts i love the way they look and they're so comfortable before we get started i'd like to say thank you to hopi yarn they sent me some amazing yarn to share with you guys and to use for this video and i picked out some really good stuff so i want to show you guys the first one i picked out was this portobello yarn it's in the shade misty green it is a cotton acrylic wool blend in a worsted weight i love that it's a chainette structure so it makes it feel a lot lighter than other worsted weight yarns and i've been looking for this shade of green for a long time next is this alpaca blaze yarn it's in the shade thistle it's a really nice like pinky purple and it's an acrylic alpaca and polyamide blend and this is a lace weight i actually already knit up a little swatch of these two because i thought these would look really nice together and are you kidding me this texture is to die for it's so fluffy and i bet if i brushed it out it would get even more fluffy if you want this effect it's two strands of the alpaca blaze and then one strand of the portobello i'm thinking i want to make this into a baby tee with like a higher neck or like another pair of shorts haven't decided yet but those are my two ideas for these two yarns and these are the two that i'll be using for the shorts in today's video it's the friends 100 percent cotton in the shade icy blue and pistachio i did want to try two different weights of this yarn so i ordered it in the cotton 86 and the cotton 88 and i just figured this out but it's the amount of ply in the yarn so the cotton 86 is a sport weight and the cotton 88 is a dk weight i already knit up little swatches for the shorts um this is what the waistband's going to be so i actually doubled up the cotton 86 because i wanted the waistband to be thick and secure so i did a two by two rib and then for the rest of the shorts i'm just going to use one strand of the cotton 88 in the stock knit stitch so thanks again to hobie for sponsoring this video and let's get started knitting some shorts so I've already made two pairs of shorts. This was the first pair that I ever made. These ones flare out a little bit, but this is kind of like the first prototype. And then this is the second pair that I made. And I like the shape of these a lot better. I think the cotton's gonna be really, really nice. So I'm super excited to try it with the cotton. I think I tried to write most of it down, but I'm just gonna copy these and go from there. We're gonna start with the waistband. Okay, I'm gonna try to explain this to the best of my ability, but this is my idea of a gauge swatch. So I did this before filming, but all I did was cast on 20 stitches with the yarn and needles that I wanted to use. And then I just used this gauge swatch to basically calculate how many stitches that I wanted to cast on for the waistband. I actually think this is the first time I showed a gauge swatch on the channel. So we are growing up, we're maturing, and we knit gauge swatches now. So since I wanted the waistband to be a 2x2 two two rib, that's what I knitted for my gauge swatch. And then I basically just measured how wide 20 stitches of the ribbing is. And since this is a waistband, I did stretch it a little bit just to make sure that it's able to fit over my hips. It's okay if it's a little bit on the bigger side because I'm going to show you a trick at the end to make sure your waistband is nice and fitted. So as you can see, this knitted swatch gave me around 5 inches of width when slightly stretched. So when it's relaxed, it's like 4 inches, and then when it's fully stretched, it's about 6 inches. So that's why it kind of just went in the middle of those two numbers. And now we're going to do a little bit of math, but don't worry, it's not too hard, it's just a ratio. Basically, my gauge swatch gave me 5 inches per 20 stitches. And then to calculate the amount of stitches that I actually need to cast on for the waistband, I just use my waist measurement and then I put that in a ratio for the amount of stitches. So I just cross multiplied 20 stitches by my waist measurement and then divided that number by 5 inches and that gives me 104 stitches. And then to do the invisible cast on, I add one to that. And that is how many stitches I cast it on. I don't know if this is the most accurate way to do this, but... It's just the way that I've been doing things recently, so yeah, and it worked out fine for me, so. So just like the swatch, I'm going to use these 5mm needles and then the Cotton 8-6 yarn, but I'm going to double up the yarn. So according to the calculation I just did, I'm going to cast on 104 stitches plus 1 because we're going to need one extra stitch for the invisible join in the round. So 105 stitches I'm going to cast on. Thank you. 
have my tape measure here. I think I'm just gonna knit a two by two rib until I get to around like two, two and a half inches. You can do whatever thickness you want depending on where you want it to sit on your body. I'm probably gonna do like two inches, so. Yeah, I'm just gonna knit just a two by two rib, which is knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, and then go from there. And of course I have like a little notebook where I just write down notes about the project. It's kind of like a project diary. I recommend that you get one as well. So if you tend to do things without patterns and you wanna remember what you did, just buy a notebook and write it down as you go. I find that usually helps me remember. You can write it in your notes app too, but. I finished the ribbing. It's time to move on to the next step and we're gonna do a few things. So this is a point where you could probably try it on to make sure that this waistband fits. I've already made these so I know these are gonna fit me, but you know what, I'm gonna try them on for you guys anyways. It's just the waistband right now. Maybe if you're a new knitter, you might not know this trick, but what I do, since I don't use a lot of patterns when I knit, I have to try it on a lot when I'm making it. You can take your project off the needles by feeding a piece of scrap yarn through your stitches so they don't all just like fall out. And then you can stretch it and try it on more um, since you're limited by the size of your needles. I'm just gonna take my needle and feed through every single stitch. Okay, so I fed my scrap yarn. I also fed it through the stitch marker and then I tied these ends so they weren't open. This is probably a really scary part if you're a new knitter, but you can just take your needles off and it won't go anywhere if you fed all of your stitches through and then tied a knot at the end. Now they are all secured by that piece of scrap yarn. So this is my waistband. I did end up knitting two inches and that was about 11 rows. So now that I know that it fits, again, I'm gonna be adding elastic at the end so it fits my hips better. So I don't mind if it's a little bit large. Um, you just don't want it to be too small, I think would be the biggest issue. Now I'm just gonna put my needles back onto my live stitches. And another thing that I do wanna mention is usually with ribbing, I'll use like a smaller needle. And then when I'm doing a stock knit, I'll like increase the needle size. But for these shorts, I don't think I'm gonna do that because I forgot that I knit my swatch in this needle size, the one that I'm using right now. And I think it's gonna look fine. And I like the thickness and feeling of this one. So I'm just gonna use the same. If you wanted to use a larger needle size, this would also be a good time to switch your needles. So for the next step, I'm gonna do two things. I'm going to switch colors and then I'm also gonna place a stitch marker halfway through. So we'll have our beginning of the round stitch marker and then also one halfway through. And that is where we're gonna be doing increases. Okay, all of my blue stitches are now green stitches. So basically for the increases on these shorts, I just increased in the middle. So this would be like the beginning of the row and then the back would be the middle of the row. And then that just increases it out. And that's how I got the shape of these shorts. I'll show you really quick how I do that. So since I just did a normal row, now I'm gonna do an increase row. And there's two types of increases that I'll be doing. I'll be doing make one rights and make one lefts and my stitch markers indicate where I'll be doing the increases. So to start off my row, all I did was knit one stitch and then I'm gonna make one left. So to make one left, I take this bar that's in the middle of my two stitches here and I take my left needle and pull up that bar front to back. Then I just knit through the back of that stitch and I created a new stitch. Then I just go on knitting like normal until I hit one stitch before my middle of the row stitch marker And now I'm gonna do something called a make one right, which is kind of similar to make one left. I'm still picking up that middle bar, but I'm doing it back to front this time. And then I'm gonna knit it through the front. And that was a make one right. Next, I knit that next stitch, slipped my marker, knit another stitch, and then I'm going to make one left again. Same way as before, um, I'll leave a timestamp for this section because I think this is probably where people would get confused the most. 
I'm just gonna knit all of my stitches until I have one stitch before the end of the row. And then finally, I'm just gonna make one right again. And then knit that last stitch. And I am now at the beginning of my row again. So that was my first increase row. And then I'm just gonna be alternating increase rows and normal rows where I don't increase. I'm just knitting all of those stitches, but that's pretty much all I'm gonna do until I decide it's long enough. So definitely rewind if you wanna see me do this again. I talk a little bit more about this type of increase in my raglan video, and this is what I'll be doing for the bulk of this project. So basically we're increasing from two points one in the front and one in the back. So they'll be the exact same in the front and the back. So now I'm just gonna knit alternating normal rows and increase rows. Right now I'm on a normal row because I just did that increase row until it's the length that I want it to be before I split off the legs. Usually I determine that by just trying them on. Um, I will say that my last one, I think I did like 10 inches, but I might decide something different based on how the cotton drapes. I will say that I'm really liking this cotton yarn so far, like it's so soft. Very nice to knit with, I usually don't knit with this small of needles. I pulled from two separate balls for the blue, but I don't even think I would have used like a whole one. This is ball number one of the green, and I'll keep track of them as we go along. I'm just gonna knit on the couch because it's extremely humid and hot outside. I'm watching tutorials for watercolor. Do you see how bare this wall is? I just haven't put up any art or anything. Obviously, I want to do some DIY projects, so I'm watching tutorials on how to watercolor. Obviously, I've done watercolor when I was a kid, but I think that it would be kind of a fun thing to get into, and then I can make art for my walls. So obviously, I'll update you guys on that in the future. So I'll check in with you once we have to split off the legs. Okay, it's nighttime, that's why the lighting is so dark. But I did wanna show you guys before I continue that this is one ball of yarn. And so this is the end of that. And that's how much I did with just one ball, which is honestly pretty solid. This thing looks kind of small to me, so I'm surprised how much I actually was able to get done with just one of these. I lost my tape measure and I lost my ruler. <laughs> it's a clear ruler, so I literally just couldn't see it. Four and a half inches. And I think I'm gonna do like 10 or 11 inches. Try it on at around eight inches. And I did 26 rows. We're gonna keep going. I'm hoping I can get these done tomorrow. But yeah, tomorrow I'll show you how to split off the legs. And then from there it goes really, really quickly. This is the most time consuming part, but once you get into the legs, it's very quick. There was a crazy storm a few hours ago. I was like genuinely scared. <laughs> like my heart was beating so fast. I've never seen that much rain come from the sky. The winds were like, like they said like 80 miles per hour. I don't know if that's kind of an exaggeration. I just read that somewhere, but and then my ceiling started to leak. So I had to move. Well, I moved my desk back, but I had to move everything that was in this corner over there so it wouldn't get wet. I made a mistake. I was kind of like cruise knitting, so I wasn't really paying attention, but somehow my stitch marker moved. Can you see? How did I not catch that earlier? It's not that much, it's like an inch, but I'm gonna have to frog it. I'm gonna do this by putting it on a different cord and feeding that cord through that row of stitches. I guess I can show you guys how to fix mistakes or how I would fix mistake like this. It's a learning lesson for both of us. Me, pay more attention. You, hopefully you'll learn how to fix a mistake um, using this method. Okay, so this is how I'm going to fix my mistake. As you can see, I already started trying to kind of like fix this, but I wasn't picking up the right stitches, so we're just gonna restart. I'm gonna go back to the row before I started having issues. I'm actually gonna go a few rows below just to make sure everything's all good. I'm going to feed a piece of string, like scrap yarn, with a needle. So it kind of gets like angled out as you increase, so it might look a little weird in this area but I'm just gonna pick up every single stitch in that row. And to do this, you just have to pay really close attention to like the stitch next to the one that you're putting your needle through. So you just wanna make sure that you're taking your time with this so you're getting like the correct row. And if you're still not sure if you're getting the right row, you can just count your stitches back to the row that you're currently knitting. Just be aware of which side of the stitch marker you're on. So if you've already knit the row, you'll have one more than if you hadn't knit it yet. 
um, I would just start at the beginning of a row and that should be easier to see. Now we're just gonna take out our needles and make sure you tie off the end of that scrap yarn so your stitches don't fly off. Now this is the fun part, you just get to frog it until it goes to that piece of scrap yarn. So I'm just gonna do a time lapse because it might be satisfying to someone. So I have frogged it to the point where the yarn is holding my stitches and as you can see it won't go any further. This is the easiest way for me to fix a mistake, um, so give it a shot. I hope you don't make mistakes. Well, it's okay if you make mistakes, but I hope that you don't have to go through the stress of making a mistake. I'm just looking out for you, okay? <laughs> If I am being honest, I took like a three day break from these shorts because I was a little bit frustrated because I kept making dumb mistakes. Now I have come back to it with a clearer head. I took my time, I paid more attention instead of just mindlessly knitting and not paying attention. So I have now finished my increase rows and that's what it looks like right now. I usually measure the length at this seam where we did our increases and my length ended up being around 10 inches. So you can also measure this on your body, which is what I normally do. So as you can see, I'm off the needles right now and then I just kind of link up the stitch marker in the middle where the seams are. If you want, you can kind of like tie these seams together and then try them on and see if that's a fit that you like. You can do more increases or less increases, basically, just depending on how like tight you want them. If you wanted them to be more loose, I would do a lot more increased rows so it kind of is more baggy. But this is the fit that I want. For me, that was 10 inches, but of course, measure it on your body and see the fit that you like. So I'm gonna put my needles back on the shorts and then we can finish up the leg holes. Okay, so I'm back on my needles now and I'm also at the beginning of my row. And just a tip, since I just tried them on and I had the scrap yarn on already, I'm just gonna leave the scrap yarn in the stitches because I'm gonna be tying off that other leg anyways. So then I don't have to refeed that scrap yarn in. So now I'm going to knit all the stitches until the middle of the row stitch marker. So basically just knit half of the stitches. Okay, now I'm at my stitch marker and like I said before, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take my scrap yarn out of all of the stitches that I just knit so that the scrap yarn is only holding that second half of stitches. And then I'm just gonna tie those stitches off so all of them are secured and they won't fall while I'm working on the other leg. And now that they're all secure, I can take my needles off of that half of the stitches. Now I have my stitches split in half. So now this is one leg and then we tied off the other leg. And that second leg I'm gonna work on after I finish the first leg. I'll come back and pick those stitches up later. So we essentially wanna connect our leg in the middle. So I am gonna add a few stitches in the middle. I'm just gonna cast on two stitches plus two more. Because those two extra stitches, I'm going to knit with my live stitches to kind of mesh it all together so there's less holes. So I cast it on my four stitches and then these two in the middle are the only ones that are going to stay. I'm just going to connect this in the round by starting to knit with all of the stitches that are on my needle. And then I knit another whole round and then stopping one stitch before the stitches that we cast it on. So as you can see here, I have one stitch before the cast it on stitch. I'm just gonna do a slip slip knit. So I just got rid of one of those cast it on stitches. Now I'm going to knit my two in the middle that are going to stay. Now I'm going to knit together my last cast it on stitch with the first stitch in the next row. As you can see, my stitch marker is in the way, so I normally just take it off, knit those two together, and then put it back on. So now we have two cast it on stitches, and then those two stitches that I knit with the stitches that were already on my needle. And I just cast it on these extra stitches to give a little bit more room in the crotch area. You can adjust this, um, kind of experiment with it if you want to but this is just what I did. 
So now I'm just gonna knit this first leg hole. And at this point, it's actually very easy to try on your shorts. You're not really limited by the size of your needles as much. So if you're at this point, I recommend just try them on as you go. That's normally what I do. But I'm just gonna do a stock knit stitch until about an inch before I want to stop because I wanna do like an inch of ribbing. So I'm just gonna knit for a little bit and try them on as I go. And then I will have a leg hole to show you guys. And then I'll show you how to do the second one. Okay, I do want these to be pretty short, so I think I'm gonna stop here and then start the ribbing after I did six rows of stock knit. I'll probably do another half inch to inch of ribbing. I do want them to be pretty short, so I don't wanna do too much. And I think this time I'm just gonna do a one by one rib. I think I like the way that looks the best. Also, if you wanted to switch back to this color for the cuff, I think that would be really cute, but I'm not gonna do that for these shorts because I want them to be all green on the bottom. So I'm just gonna knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one for, we'll see, maybe around six rows again. So I'll let you know how many rows I do with that. I finished one leg. I ended up doing six rows of stock knit and then four rows of a one by one rib. Um, I'm just gonna cast off like normal, not a stretchy cast off, cause I just feel like that would look nicer. This is all that was left from the third ball. So I think I'm just gonna start a new one and then I won't have to like reattach it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up all of those stitches that are on that piece of scrap yarn. Now all of my stitches are back on my needle and I'm just going to pick up a few stitches where we casted them on for the previous leg. I actually like to do this with a crochet hook. I find it a little bit easier. So I'm going to take my working end of the yarn and I'm going to pick up four stitches. As you can see, there's kind of like four spaces where you can pick up a loop. So I'm gonna pick up my loops there. So I'm just gonna insert my hook into that first space and pick up a loop. And then I picked up a loop from the next space, insert my hook again, pull up a loop, and then one more. Insert my hook and pull up a loop. And then I just slide my needle where I picked up the loops with my crochet hook. Sometimes it's hard to pick them up with the knitting needle because it doesn't bend at all. That's why I do it with the crochet hook. But I still do it with the needle sometimes. It's really up to you and whatever you have on hand. It's just a little tip if you want to do it that way. So now we have four casted on stitches and we're going to knit a whole round and then work in those two extra stitches once we come back to them. So I'm just going to add a stitch marker and then knit up until those casted on stitches. Okay, so we're coming up on where we cast it on those stitches, and again, I'm going to leave one stitch before the cast it on stitches. And I'm just going to do kind of the same thing that I did for the other leg. I'm going to slip slip knit that live stitch with the extra cast it on stitch. Then knit the next two stitches. Then just remove that stitch marker and then knit the last casted on stitch with the first stitch in the next row. And then I just put my stitch marker back on and knit like normal. And then as you can see, this part is now closed up. There are still a few little holes. It's really hard to avoid the holes when you're picking up stitches while knitting. But what I like to do is just leave long ends when I'm cutting my yarn and stuff so then I can go back and reinforce those holes when I'm weaving in my ends and stuff. And since it's in an area that's kind of hidden, it's not the worst thing in the world if you decide to just mend it with your loose ends and kind of close up the holes that way with a tapestry needle. So now I'm just going to knit the rest of this leg. Obviously, you can adjust your length if you would like to. You could even make them into pants if you have the patience to do that. Um, I think that'd be really cute. Maybe one day I'll do something similar. So now I'm gonna knit exactly how I knit the other leg. So six stock knit rows and then four one by one rib rows and then just a normal cast off. So I'm gonna finish this up and then I'll be back. I finished. 
Before I try them on, I wanna show you guys a little trick that I've been doing recently. A big challenge with like crochet and knitting waistbands and necklines and stuff is that they'll get stretched out. I actually saw another creator on YouTube doing this. Her name is Lily Bobasu. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong, but I'll link her channel right here. She did this with her crochet bloomers and I'm gonna do it like a little knit version of it. She used sharing elastic, which as you can see, I have a ton of because I use this when I sew, but I never really thought to use it in like knitwear and crochet items, but it makes sense. So she was just using white yarn. So she just crocheted this into her waistband. Um, I'm not really sure how to do like a knit version of that. So what I do is I weave it in at the end. So at this point, we're almost done, but we're just gonna add some elastic to the waistband. So shout out to her for that idea. I'll link this specific video in the description. I'll show you guys how I put it in the waistband so it doesn't show on the front. And then we'll try them on, and then I'll show you the comparison before and after. Okay, the first thing that I did was I measured out my elastic, and I think I did my waist measurement plus like an inch because we need the ends to be able to tie it in a knot at the end. Then I just tied one end of the elastic onto the tapestry needle. And then this part might be a little bit confusing to explain, but just watch carefully. So on the knit side, we have these upside down Vs. So we're just gonna be picking up the outside parts of the V. Then we're gonna pull the elastic through. Then this next little section is the purl side. So we're just gonna go through one of the middle bars and pull our elastic through that. Then again, on the knit part of the ribbing, we're gonna go through the outside of the Vs. And then on the purl part, through one of those middle stitches. And we're doing it this way so you don't really see it on the outside. So I'm just gonna do this all the way around until we reach the beginning. And just a little tip, you can clip your beginning end so it doesn't like fly through. Then I just tie the two ends together a few times. I think I did it like three or four times just to make sure it's secure. And then trim off the excess. So you can't see it on the outside, but this is what it looks like on the inside. And I'm pretty much gonna do this three more times around the waistband. So this one I'm doing at the bottom of the waistband. And then I also do two more in the middle. And this is what it looks like on the inside. It's super stretchy. So now with the elastic, it will keep its shape better. And this is just one way to do that. Okay, the elastic is now in, so they are officially done. And it's time to try them on. So this is how they turned out. I actually love them so much. I can see myself wearing these like literally all the time. I love the length. I didn't want them to be too long or too short. So I feel like this was the perfect length for me. These shorts did take forever because I made a few mistakes along the way. I had to go back and fix some things, but I'm really glad that I did go back and fix them because I'm very happy with the way they turned out. I'm gonna be wearing these so much in the fall. I feel like knit shorts are a very good piece for transitional weather because you can wear them with a tank top, you can wear them with a sweater, and these ones are cotton, so they're still breathable if you do get hot. And this yarn is so soft. I feel like some other cotton yarns can be kind of rougher to the touch but this one is not at all this one has a very nice texture to it i'm definitely going to be buying more color combos for these shorts i really do like the thickness of the waistband by doubling up the cotton 86 and then using the cotton 88 for the body part because it gives a nicer drape so the waistband's really thick and then this is more flowy by the way if you were wondering i think i used one ball of the blue yarn and then four balls of the green yarn. I'm so excited about my new shorts. And also this is before the elastic and this is after the elastic. So the elastic definitely helps with the fit of the waistband. I'm so excited about my new shorts. I think I'm gonna wear them for the rest of the day. I think that is all that I have for you guys today. Hopefully you enjoyed watching me make these really cute knit shorts. And I said this in my fashion trends video, but you could make a pair of shorts like this and then also follow my raglan guide so you can make a little matching set. 
and that would be perfect for fall. I think someone should do that and send me a photo, please. I will probably do it myself if I have enough yarn left. If you enjoy this video, I'll give you a second to give it a like and make sure you subscribe because it really, really helps me out and it lets me know to keep making videos like this for you guys. Thank you again to Hobie for sponsoring this video and sending me some yarn to show you guys. I'm sure you guys will see me use this yarn in future videos. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.